Welcome back to See the Pattern. In this episode, we will be exploring more problems with the Big Bang. In particular, we'll be looking at the problem of the current timeline of the Big Bang Theory. Now, this is not a new problem. This problem has actually been growing over the past few years and is officially called the impossible galaxy problem. The standard model of cosmology makes firm predictions about the timeline of the universe, from the first atoms to the first stars and then galaxy formation. You are probably familiar with some of this, but let's recap what the timeline of the Big Bang Theory is. Now, we all know that the universe started with what we term the Big Bang. Space and time came into existence and they formed from a gravitational singularity that our physics is not capable of describing. The closest we can come to the moment of the Big Bang is what is called the Planck era, which occurred at 10 to the minus 43 seconds after the Big Bang occurred. And at that point, all the forces had the same strength and possibly were unified. The universe is minuscule. It is only about one Planck length long, which is about 10 to the minus 35 meters. After this came the grand unification epoch, where gravity separated from the other forces and the first particles started to form. Now this lasted from about 10 to the minus 43 seconds to about 10 to the minus 36 seconds. After this came the inflationary epoch. The universe undergoes extremely rapid expansion known as cosmic inflation and expands from its small size to about one centimeter. This lasts until about 10 to the minus 32 seconds. Now this epoch is one of the ones we'll be referring back to later on. After this, we move on through several epochs where more fundamental particles form until we finally get to the photon epoch, where the universe is filled with hot plasma. Photons dominate the energy of the universe and interact with charged protons, electrons and the nuclei, meaning that the universe is opaque. Now this period lasts from about 3 minutes to about 240,000 years after the Big Bang. We then enter the recombination epoch. The temperature now starts to fall to around 3000 Kelvin and the electrons become bound to the protons, forming the first hydrogen and helium atoms. Photons can now finally travel freely and the universe turns transparent. We then enter the Dark Age, lasting from about 300,000 years to 150 million years, and no stars have formed, so there are no new photons being created. The first stars form around 300 to 400 million years after the Big Bang. These are what are termed population 3 stars and are metal-free, containing only hydrogen and helium. They are large and burn through their fuel rapidly, paving the way for heavy elements to be created in their deaths. And finally, around 800 million years after the Big Bang, the first small galaxies form. From then, it moves on until the present era. Now remember that astronomers determine the age of the celestial bodies using redshift. And there is a one-to-one -one relationship between its redshift and its age in their model. In the previous episode where I talked about the curious case of quasars, I already pointed out that redshift may not always be related one-to-one -one with an object's age and may cause us to believe that the objects are older than in fact they actually are. As our space-based telescopes have improved, we have been able to detect fainter and fainter signals from what we believe is the earliest time of the universe. The problem is that some of these objects simply should not exist. So let's examine some of these objects. They have detected examples of supermassive galaxies which have a redshift of 10, which corresponds to an age of 600 million years after the Big Bang. Now that is just two to 300 million years after the first stars formed. And it is physically impossible to generate these supermassive galaxies in such a short time. This is why they call it the impossible galaxy problem. And the problem is now not just confined to galaxies. They have also detected supermassive black holes, which date back to 800 million years after the Big Bang. Now these are 1 billion solar mass objects, which are formed in only 500 million years. Now there is either something wrong with our physics, meaning different forces are required to enable these objects to form in such a short period of time, or there is something wrong with our timeline of events. So which do they choose, do you think? Well, so far no one is brave enough to change the physics, so instead they propose changing the period of inflation. So they believe that if they can tweak that very small period of time when the universe expanded to about the size of one centimeter, 
and they extend that period so that it matches up with the observations that they see. But that feels a bit like plugging a sinking ship because they don't really provide any explanation or reason why that period should be extended to the amount of time that they give it. The problems don't end there because more impossible structures have also turned up in some of the Hubble images. Anthony Gonzalez came across this striking image of a distant large spiral type galaxy being warped into an arc shape by gravitational lensing and it's nestled amongst the massive supercluster of galaxies. Now it is estimated that the galaxy formed around 1 billion years after the Big Bang. And the problem with the image comes from the alignment of the background galaxy and the foreground galaxy, not the galaxy itself. In his paper he finds the odds of this alignment happening almost impossible and he actually states that this arc simply should not exist. Both the size of the foreground cluster and the brightness of the arc cannot be predicted by the current models. Now turning our attention a little closer to home, it is believed that our Milky Way formed through the merger of smaller galaxies over a vast time scale. The older stars should be found in the centre of the galactic core and it is believed that the arms are newer structures and should contain only younger stars. Now new observations have found a very very old star living in one of the spiral arms of the galaxy. And this is a population 3 type star, so metal free, which should only have formed in the very early stages of the universe and none should exist now. Remember that these stars were giants and burned out quickly, yet here is one happily living in the Milky Way arm which formed much later than the galactic core. As always, follow the evidence, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.